I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and this is Equal Entertainment. It's time to give Barbie her crown. The summer blockbuster is now the top grossing movie of the year in the U.S. Barbie has now made $574 million, a number only hit by the Super Mario Brothers movie. The difference, it took Mario 138 days to reach $574 million. Barbie only took 34 days. Warner Brothers has not had a top grossing movie since 2011 with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Drew Barrymore is thanking Renee Rapp for her quick thinking after a stalker confronted Barrymore at an event in New York City. She says the out Sex Lives of College Girls star went full bodyguard. The two were on stage when an audience member rushed the stage. Rapp guided Barrymore off the stage while security dealt with the stalker. Barrymore says the swift action gave her a whole new definition of sexiness. The two returned to the stage later. The stalker was arrested at Barrymore's Long Island home just days after the incident. Halle Berry has finalized her divorce with Olivier Martinez after a nearly eight-year-long court battle. The two have agreed to share joint legal and physical custody of their nine-year-old son, Maceo, and Berry will pay Martinez $8,000 a month in child support. She will also pay Martinez 4.3% of all income she makes over $2 million. The former couple became close after meeting on the set of the 2012 film Dark Tide and went on to marry in July 2013. Barry and Martinez filed for divorce in 2015. The new horror movie Perpetrator is getting under the skin of audiences with its body horror premise. On her 18th birthday, a young woman gains supernatural levels of empathy as girls from her school begin to go missing. The film has been well received at the Tribeca and Frameline Film Festivals. Writer and director Jennifer Reeder spoke with me about how this project highlights the current fight for bodily autonomy. I want to begin by asking you a little bit about your horror origins, where you, where those seeds were planted and it was something that you loved. And then also when you knew that you wanted to use horror to tell stories about, especially, uh, you know, underrepresented folks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, I've made, I've made lots and lots of films, lots of short films and, you know, a handful of, of features. And um, even before um, a feature film that I did and that came out in 2019, Knives and Skin, which is kind of very related to perpetrator it's sort of horror adjacent but i'd made a bunch of short films that oftentimes featured you know dark elements i mean oftentimes there was a missing girl or mm -hmm. a dead girl or um there were at least um secrets um you know there were people sustaining injuries that wouldn't heal i mean i, I, I can't resist a bandaged face you know <laughs> um and i wasn't uh I mean, as a consumer, I, I like genre films mm -hmm. um, and uh, and more so the ones that that are, I would say, more psychological than sort of super violent or, or, or slasher, for instance, or even jump scares. You know, I just think that there's there's a way that um, that you can make some surreal moves. You can make some complicated psychological moves in genre that just don't exist in the romantic comedy world or the, you know, the kind of serious, you know, drama world. Uh, and so, you know, when I knew that I wanted to pivot from a bunch of shorts and do this and do, and do a feature length, I, I thought, okay, now is the time for me to, to just dig, you know, get a little closer to genre or, or borrow more from genre and knives and skin. Like I said, that's prior to, to perpetrator still is more sort of horror adjacent. I mean, it kind of borrows from the, tr from horror, it borrows from thriller. I even kind of borrows from the musical, um, Love that. to, to um to tell a different kind of story and with the success of that and it was really embraced so kind of boldly by um the you know not just like genre fans but the genre press you know i thought okay I, people are ready for for weird my weird moves and <laughs> um you know so then i started i i thought like i wanted to to sort of be even more bold uh, with the way that I would kind of use genre to tell to tell a kind of more allegorical story, for instance. Um, and that's, you know, where I feel the perpetrator is. 
the very, the, uh, very, very early on, a, a film that I did um, just out of grad school was um, The Adventures of White Trash Girl, which is like a girl superhero, um, very gnarly kind of riot girl sort of sensibility. And and even though that's not horror per se, she is a girl who has toxic bodily fluids. I mean, that, you know, that and that was an early piece. And looking back on that, you know, very aligned with kind of um, genre. So, you know, I think I've always kind of um, made moves that are either, you know, fully embracing genre or at least kind of like, you know, genre adjacent. It just feels like a really fruitful place for me to, yeah, get weird and play around. Yeah, because once you know the rules of a genre, it's fun to break them. Oh, totally. Yeah. And I feel (laughs) like I'm in, I am a rule breaker, you know, and I think that there's just like some other more conventional forms of storytelling just don't really, you know, don't allow for, for rule breaking, which is no fun. Right. (laughs) Well, thank you for that. And would you talk a bit about, you know, I know that some of the seeds from Perpetrator are in some of your previous work, but would you talk a little bit about this specific story and the inspiration for that? Sure. So, you know, again, like leading up to um, even making Knives and Skin and then touring around with Knives and Skin, I would get asked a question a lot about what my experience was working with so many young girls in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And I would say it was awesome. You know, that's why I keep doing it. But then I realized, oh, I think some of these people are asking the question with the opposite assumption, as though their 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 nightmare would be to walk into a room where there would be, you know, 20 plus 14 year old girls. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, I, I had always realized that we were sort of a, a culture that is obsessed with youth and beauty among young women. Um, and yet we also kind of hate young women and have built a machine to, you know, disrupt their evolution. But I thought, okay, I'm going to actually make a film that really points to that more directly. And, and I was thinking about the term wild and out of control, which oftentimes mm-hmm. is, is used not to celebrate a young woman's kind of agency, especially over her sexuality, but to really d- d- dismiss it and diminish it. Yeah. So I thought, okay, what if I made a story about a wild and out of control girl who really becomes wild and out of control? And, you know, I was like, ah, oh, that's a, that's a classic shapeshifter story. <laughs> and so then, yeah, you know, it kind of like, uh, un, un, you know, unraveled from there, but it felt like a really great kind of metaphor for how we both, you know, are obsessed and, and, and still, uh, you know, are, are, are terrified of, of young women. Prior to even making Perpetrator, I would get asked about, uh, you know, why I thought there were so many women um, making moves in the horror world, you know, that that seemed to be a kind of a, a new sort of a trend. And I would say a couple of things. I would say, well, first of all, you know, the the world's most favorite monster, which is Frankenstein's Creature, was authored by a teenage girl. Mary Shelley was 19 when that film, when that mm. book was released. Um, And then I would say, you know, this should be obvious, but, you know, uh, people with uteruses have from a very young age also have a pretty consistent, pretty gnarly relationship with blood. Mm -hmm. Um, Childbirth, I've, I have three children. Childbirth is, can be pretty gory and gnarly. Um, I have experienced miscarriage, you know, that can be, uh, you know, another kind of body horror. And yet all of that, which is entirely normal and natural again for like bodies with uteruses um those are that kind of blood that kind of um you you know sort of experience uh is at best a secret and you know at worst um a shame the 90s sitcom frasier is getting a tv reboot more than 30 years after the original Kelsey Grammer is back as Frasier, and he sings a new arrangement of the opening song. The show will feature a different supporting cast, and rather than being set in Seattle, Frasier is moving back to Boston, where the character first appeared in the series Cheers. Grammer tells ITV that some Cheers alums might even pop up in the new series. It premieres in October on Paramount+. Plus. I Dream of Jeannie star Barbara Eden is turning 92 years old, and she's celebrating in an all-too-relatable way. The actress told People magazine she's going out for a steak dinner with her husband and some close friends. Eden says she has two appearances scheduled this year at conventions to meet with fans. Though best known for playing a genie who irritated her master, Eden has been in more than 25 films and starred in five television series. She got her start in 1955 as a sketch performer on The Johnny Carson Show. I Dream of Jeannie wouldn't come until 10 years after that. 
You can watch The Advocate channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For The Advocate channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and thank you for watching.